Chapter 34 Loyalty to God Under Persecution This chapter is based on Acts 5, verses 12 through 42. The apostles continued their work of mercy in healing the afflicted and in proclaiming a crucified and risen Savior with great power. Numbers were continually added to the church by baptism, but none dared join them who were not united heart and mind with the believers in Christ. Multitudes flocked to Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those who were vexed by unclean spirits. Many sufferers were laid in the streets as Peter and John passed by, that their shadows might fall upon and heal them. The power of the risen Savior had indeed fallen upon the apostles, and they worked signs and miracles that daily increased the number of believers. These things greatly perplexed the priests and rulers, especially those among them who were Sadducees. They saw that if the apostles were allowed to preach a resurrected Savior and to do miracles in His name, their doctrine, that there was no resurrection of the dead, would be rejected by all, and their sect would soon become extinct. The Pharisees saw that the tendency of their preaching would be to undermine the Jewish ceremonies and make the sacrificial offerings of none effect. Their former efforts to suppress these preachers had been in vain, but they now felt determined to put down the excitement. Delivered by an Angel The apostles were accordingly arrested and imprisoned, and the Sanhedrin was called to try their case. A large number of learned men, in addition to the council, were summoned, and they counseled together what should be done with these disturbers of the peace. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors, and brought them forth, and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning, and taught. When the apostles appeared among the believers, and recounted how the angel had led them directly through the band of soldiers guarding the prison, and bade them resume the work which had been interrupted by the priests and rulers, The brethren were filled with joy and amazement. The priests and rulers in council had decided to fix upon them the charge of insurrection and accused them of murdering Ananias and Sapphira and of conspiring to deprive the priests of their authority and put them to death. They trusted that the mob would then be excited to take the matter in hand and to deal by the apostles as they had dealt by Jesus. They were aware that many who did not accept the doctrine of Christ were weary of the arbitrary rule of the Jewish authorities, and were anxious for some decided change. If these persons became interested in and embraced the belief of the apostles, acknowledging Jesus as the Messiah, they feared the anger of the entire people would be raised against the priests, who would be made to answer for the murder of Christ." They decided to take strong measures to prevent this. They finally sent for the supposed prisoners to be brought before them. Great was their amazement when the report was brought back that the prison doors were found securely bolted and the guards stationed before them, but the prisoners were nowhere to be found. Soon the report was brought. Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Although the apostles were miraculously delivered from prison, they were not saved from examination and punishment. Christ had said when he was with them, Take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils. God had given them a token of his care and an assurance of his presence by sending the angel to them. It was now their part to suffer for the sake of that Jesus whom they preached. The people were so wrought upon by what they had seen and heard that the priests and rulers knew it would be impossible to excite them against the apostles. The Second Trial Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. 
they were not as willing to bear the blame of slaying Jesus as when they swelled the cry with the debased mob, His blood be on us and on our children. Peter, with the other apostles, took up the same line of defense he had followed at his former trial. Then Peter and all the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. It was the angel sent by God who delivered them from prison, and who commanded them to teach in the temple. In following his directions they were obeying the divine command, which they must continue to do at any cost to themselves. Peter continued, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. The spirit of inspiration was upon the apostles, and the accused became the accusers, charging the murder of Christ upon the priests and rulers who composed the council. The Jews were so enraged at this that they decided, without any further trial and without authority from the Roman officers, to take the law into their own hands and put the prisoners to death. Already guilty of the blood of Christ, they were now eager to imbrue their hands in the blood of his apostles. But there was one man of learning and high position whose clear intellect saw that this violent step would lead to terrible consequences. God raised up a man of their own counsel to stay the violence of the priests and rulers. Gamaliel, the learned Pharisee and doctor, a man of great reputation, was a person of extreme caution, who before speaking in behalf of the prisoners, requested them to be removed. He then spoke with great deliberation and calmness. Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what we intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Theudas, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, Refrain from these men, and let them alone, for if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. The priests could not but see the reasonableness of his views. They were obliged to agree with him, and very reluctantly released the prisoners. After beating them with rods and charging them again and again to preach no more in the name of Jesus, or their lives would pay the penalty of their boldness. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Well might the persecutors of the apostles be troubled when they saw their inability to overthrow these witnesses for Christ, who had faith and courage to turn their shame into glory and their pain into joy for the sake of their master, who had borne humiliation and agony before them. Thus these brave disciples continued to teach in public and secretly in private houses by the request of the occupants who dared not openly confess their faith for fear of the Jews.